Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. Today I'm joined by Damien from Auth0, who came all the way from Argentina. Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. So tell me about Auth0. So Auth0 is an identity as a service platform. What we do is we make it easy for developers to integrate with Facebook, Google, or enterprise platforms so that they can obtain user information and perform authentication from it. We make the security part of that very easy so that engineers don't have to handle it themselves. That's great. You know, when I'm not actually doing these videos, I'm actually an Auth0 customer. So when I build my own applications, I use you to do the login and authentication for my own applications. It's great to hear that. So today we're going to talk about something pretty specific, actually, about your architecture. Auth0 has a multi-tenant SaaS application, right? And you use MongoDB on the back end? Yes, we use MongoDB Enterprise to store user information. So let's give our viewers an idea of scale. You know, roughly how many logins are you handling every month? We're doing approximately 1.5 billion logins a month. Wow, wow. And is this uh, multi-tenant SaaS application that you've built, is it multi-AZ, multi-region? How is it designed? OK, so we do two different things. We do multi-AC failover, mm -hmm. and then we do multi-region failover. So we can do both depending on if they're having regions within a specific AC or between a specific region. Got it. So when you have a MongoDB cluster in US East 1, for example, you have your nodes spread out across multiple availability zones? Yes. So if you have these three nodes, each yeah. of them would be in a separate availability zone in US East. And the same thing in US West. So we would do one, two, three availability zones. Great. And are you running MongoDB Enterprise, or what flavor are you running? We're running MongoDB Enterprise. OK, you're managing yourself on EC2. Yes, it's running on top of EC2 instances from day one. Great. OK. So. You know, you and I know how Mongo Enterprise works uh, in terms of failover, but why don't we explain to the viewers how do you attain high availability with a MongoDB cluster running in the cloud? Sure. So MongoDB is a type of database that has a primary and secondary type of node, and yeah. they introduce the concept of a replica set. Okay. What that means is that let's say this node is the primary for the region. This is the only node that can get writes if it's a primary. All of the other nodes that you see here are there just for replication purposes. Okay. You are not supposed, except in some particular designs, to be reading from them, and you cannot write to them. OK. So in this particular architecture, uh, you know, like we discussed earlier, you're spread across multiple regions, and I think actually sort of multiple platforms here. Um, why are you doing multi-region in the first place? OK, so Otsiru is kind of the entry point to an application, right? Your end users log in there. If we are down, then our customers' applications are down, and we don't want that. So we build cross-region failover and cross-AZ failover from day one. Great. So it's kind of like super high availability. It's, it's what we try. OK, great. So what we're going to talk about today is how you evolved this multi-region uh, high availability model for MongoDB specifically. So I guess we'll start with what you used to do. So explain to, explain to us how MongoDB works across region in terms of uh, high availability and failover. Yeah, sure. So. The first thing we attempted to do was have automatic failover. Yeah. What that meant is that we would have a probe checking consistently against our primary region, right? So, so let's you'd have say a health check it was from Route 53. Yes, US West 2. Okay. And we would also do a synthetic transaction to ensure that you could authenticate, okay. right? If we saw that the reason why you couldn't authenticate is because there was a problem in the primary region, let's say that was US West 2 we would try to automatically fade over to the secondary region. So how did we do that? We set up a VPN connection between the primary region, the secondary region, and then we had another cloud provider. We just had one MongoDB node. OK, so why did you have just one node in this sort of third, third party here? OK, that's a good question. So the way the Mongo election process works is that because it's an election, you need a majority to win. So if I want at least three nodes in the primary region, that means I need to have three here. Mm -hmm. If I want to fail over, I need at least three to do kind of the same thing, because I don't know how long I might be without a region. And is this because you're running in three availability zones? Correct. OK, so because it's an even number, six, you're not going to get a majority necessarily if you just have three and three. Exactly. So you need another region, and in this case it was in another cloud provider, to give you seven. So let's say if this connection breaks up, this data center thinks that there are four nodes, and this one thinks that there are four nodes. They can both form an election, and you can pick a winner. Got it. OK. So this looks great on paper, uh, but in practice, we know that reality is often different with architectures. So how did this break down? Why did this not work? Well, the problem comes with 
the BPM breaking, right? Okay. It's like you have a lot of resilience in the data nodes, but as soon as the BPA connection that's like could have long latency because it's cross region starts to fall, then the cluster itself might think that nodes that are actually available there are not. Okay, so if this VPN connection goes down or, or has intermittent connection connectivity issues, these nodes over here may not be aware of these nodes or may not be aware that they're up. Yes, so for example, what happened one time was something like this. We had a problem in the origin of this VPN. So for this part of the cluster, there were four nodes. Yeah. For this one, there were three. But instead of picking a primary from these because of an issue that Mongo had that they already fixed, there was no cluster being picked. Uh, there was no primary for that cluster being picked. What that meant is that we could not write to it and we could not read from it. So if I'm understanding correctly, there was no, the election they couldn't pick a winner because there yes. was a majority of nodes that could select a new primary. Yes. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. You were stuck. Yeah, so that, it took a while to kind of figure out why that was. Yeah. And once we did, we realized, hey, the chances of having a whole region actually have issues are very low. Yeah. So we decided to go ahead and simplify the whole process. Okay, so yeah, because you're already running multi-AZ within a region, I'd say a majority of customers that I personally work with operate within run region. Now, you want to have this extra high availability, so you do multi-region, but the chances of having a regional level issue are, are, are extremely low, so you can sort of account for that in your architecture. Yes, they're very low. So what we went ahead and did was just, we got rid of this. Okay, so you actually got rid of sort of the other cloud provider, the third party that you yes. were using for the seventh node. Yes. Oh, interesting. And after that, we changed this connection to use a BPC peering instead of being a VPN. Okay, so before you were using VPNs between all, but now you're using cross-regional VPC peering? Yes, okay. that's a BPC peering. And what we also did was forbid these set of nodes from being able to become primaries in an election. So they would never try to be picked. If any node won an election, it would be here meaning that the latency if any node one would be uh, like very low because they're on the same region. So because there's three, you can always have a winner in the election. You're not going to have this even number issue with six. Exactly. These is like if they weren't there, they're just receiving writes and updates. But when an election happens, it just happens here. So VPC peering is very reliable, but then even if there's connectivity issues, it doesn't make a difference. Yes, it does not affect the election process. Okay, but if this health check fails and, and you do want to cut over a region, how does that work? What happens? So we normally get alerted by like our monitoring infrastructure. Yeah. And what we do is we say, hey, there seems to be an issue with the primary region. Okay. We're going to switch over. So we run a simple script that basically reverts the previous operation. So only nodes in this region can become primary. And the ones here are, it's like they weren't even there. If they're there, they might be receiving updates, but otherwise they do not participate in an election. Okay, so you're actually updating a record in DNS to sort of flip to the new load balancer then to look, look at the new primary in the other cluster? Yes, so that's what we do after that. Once we've made sure that the primary is here, we just switch a record and that's it. So we start routing traffic there and depending on DNS caching policies that our customers might have, this might take again in the order of minutes. That's great. So in a few minutes, you can be up and running again in another region, but you don't have that issue where you might have a failure to elect a new primary. You, you know that there'll be a new primary, and you know that you're operating here before you make the switch. Yes, that's one of the very good things about having three AZs and three nodes there. It's at least, even if one AZ were to have, be having issues as well, we could pick a primary because you have two out of three there. That's great. Well, I love how you've built this sort of next level high availability uh, and how you know, very often we have these perfect architectures, right? But then they encounter real life and start to fall down. And this kind of accounts for that and still comes up with a pretty elegant multi-region uh, architecture for MongoDB and really for anything that can operate at the kind of scale you guys are operating at. It's nice to see. Yeah, it, it works for us. And as you said, like one thing's the board and then our thing's production. Yeah, yeah. thanks for sharing with us today. It's, it's going to be very interesting for our viewers. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.